Hello. Welcome to another VOD review. But I don't feel as chirpy about this one. It's because I'm tired. I'm tired of, of, of the Washington Justice. And that's the team we're going to talk about today. It's the Washington Justice taking on the Boston Uprising. I have a lot of thoughts. And I'm going to try and stay level-headed throughout the entire review. Can't promise anything. But we'll see how it goes. I've been very publicly open on plat chat and on other things about my thoughts on both of these teams. Uh, the, we saw the Washington Justice drag me in, get my hopes and dreams up, and, and then just to have it taken away at the final hour. It's, it's sad. It, it's sad to see. So we, we need to appreciate the good times. So we're going to highlight Boston, and we're going to talk about the good things of Boston. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about the striker stuff on this uh, on this VOD. I talked about it in my weekly recap uh, earlier on in an earlier YouTube video. If you want to check that out, go check that out. TLDR, Marvel feels bad that he has personal reasons that he wants to go back to Korea. Striker, he's out. Huck doesn't want him there anymore. Obviously, some drama going on behind the scenes. He's out of there. I'll be surprised if someone picks up Striker again. So let's get into this game. I don't think it'll be a super long review. Um, because it was, ah, so loud, loud leg day. Um, so this is the Washington Justice team. Uh, we have Decay, Happy, Mag, Krillin, and Opener. So they are, uh, this is a good team. They, uh, they have good players. They've been playing really well. You know, they've been impressive. And then they just go and do shit like this. It feels like... I kind of want to look at what happened with the Washington Justice because they are a good team. Like, they, they have good performances when Happy's playing well, when Decay's playing well, Mag's playing well. They look dominant, and they did that last week against the Atlanta Reign. They were absolutely sick. They were playing to their potential. They were playing everything really well. It doesn't seem like they have a good solution to the Zyre, and I want to really start looking and breaking down where it went wrong for the Washington Justice because I can mold at them all I want. I can get upset at them all I want, but I, I genuinely don't know why they lost so badly to the Boston Uprising because it wasn't close, right? Other than when Boston decided to throw its all in, and we'll talk about that when it happens, it, it just wasn't close. Uh, Takei went from hitting Pulse Bomb after Pulse Bomb on to Ultraviolet, one of the best Annas in the league, to then not just holding on to it for Overwatch 3. It was, it was a weird one. Um, the Boston Uprising squad, we got Victoria, Valentine, Punk, Crimson, Faith. This is the five players that they should be playing 100% of the time. These are, I don't care how good you think MCD is. I don't know how good you think Itzel is. These five players are being successful. These five players are getting the map wins. These five players can do well. This team with these five players can be the best of the rest. Boston is not going to be suddenly some top five team in North America, but they can easily be middle of the table. They can easily sit comfortably at like an eighth and be able to be that gatekeeper team for the bottom end because they have the talent for that. Crimzo has been playing super well on the Ana, his best hero. Punk showing versatility on the uh, on the Zaya. We know he can play the uh, Sigma, but even when he has been forced to play the Winston, it's solid. It looks good. If you want to back one player, I think Punk is the one to do that. I think Victoria actually had a really good series in this match as well, proving that they don't need striker. In the words of Huck, no one player is more valuable than the team or more important than the team. And I think Victoria is stepping in, has been playing well. Valentine Tracer is apparently good now. Fucking who to thunk it. Um, if they can consistently put performances up like this, they can, they can beat a lot of teams. Um, something that wasn't really talked about was this is uh, Crimzo's revenge game. Uh, Crimzo and Decay are feuding at all times. Uh, if you don't know, back from the 2020 Dallas Fuel, Crimzo was very upset with Decay. Decay held Dallas Fuel Scrims hostage, ended up getting traded to Washington. Washington went on that crazy run. Crimzo was very public about his disdain for uh, Decay. So, you know, I think Crimzo's smirking a little bit. This is his revenge get on this one. So let's, uh, let's just start breaking this one down. Uh, apparently I said Vindame was on the Washington Justice on Plat Chat at some point. I, I don't remember that. I don't know. Maybe I was blind with rage. Um, but the, the support line... Of Krillin and Opener had been doing so far, doing well so far through the season, but yeah. Um, 
You said he was in Philly? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just off the goop. Called Fixer Vin name. Well, that doesn't even make sense. That is probably just me. Um, all right, so we're going to have Boston playing, and this is a composition that they should be playing. They're going to play the win uh, the Zaya uh, Reaper Soldier stuff. I don't mind the Washington Justice comp. I think the Reaper Winston Tracer is makes sense. I think they're... I think you'll see more teams like the San Francisco Shock and the Los Angeles Gladiators playing this style if they don't want to lean into the Zaya. So I don't think the composition... I think the Zaya composition is better, but it's not by, like, a drastic margin, right? So good nade by Krillin. That was just good aggression. I it, it felt like Boston got there way later. Like, why was Boston so late to the party? How does it... Why does... So they just... So interestingly, they just abandon Krillin and they just get there before Krillin. So while the Boston Uprising is waiting for everyone to get here, what Washington does is they actually leave Krillin behind and they just, because everyone else is faster, right? They got Lucio, Reaper, Tracer, Monkey. So they just run out and they get positioning before the Anna even gets there, which is actually a smart play. And for that reason, Boston gets stuck at this doorway. As soon as they get stuck at this doorway, it's over. Like you're not gonna, unless you get some pick or some crazy play, like you, you get a big nade by, boss, uh, by uh, Washington. They just step up, they're out of control. Yo, thank you very much, Juicy. I appreciate that. Nice early lead on the Nano. Yeah, yeah. So there. Washington looking good so far. Oh, Valentine, that was a greedy Wraith into no Wraith. Alright, so this is a good back and forth. Washington Justice should get the Nano first, and they need to play behind that. Oh, Valentine gets happy, though. Valentine Day... If, uh, Valentine Day. <laughs> Valentine's playing a very good reaper of like he's he's giving his team a lot of space he's making himself a threat going forward and getting the bubble from punk and then disengaging as soon as they turn for him right like that's how the reaper should be played gets a great punish on to uh happy and like that's a free win right and like valentine has ult happy doesn't and i think this this big difference is the the zaya bubble and part of you has to question like i don't know if the re the soldier would be better i don't think it is because you just i feel like you would struggle to shoot uh you'd have to play like super flanky if anything, but I think it might be hard to play the Reaper into the, the Zaya Reaper because you just don't have that bubble, right? 1080p, please. I think it is 1080p. It's just still not great quality. Good Death Blossom, Nano Death Blossom bubble. Clean play by Boston. Good strategy. Also, open, yeah, open has beat. Faith doesn't yet, so that's an interesting difference. Do you guys see what Finale posted? No. Okay, if, you, if you can link me what Finale posted, I'd love to see it. Because we see, we've seen Muse's response. Auto is not 1080p. Just means that more than 720p. Really? All right. Here you go. Oh, good sleep. Whiff of a pulse on from... Uh, all right, good late beat. Uh, it, that would have been a really good fight. This would have been super good for Boston if they didn't give up the cap. Like, that was a really good disengage. Mag primals. Uh, they get the nano, they primal. They get the pulse bomb, they disengage. And then they re-engage with the beat. Really clean play if they just hadn't lost the point. If they hadn't lost the point, they'd be, what, at like 80, 85%. And the justice would have him to rush in. But still a good fight. Washington had to use all their ultimates. 
mind, but that, that still stings in my mind. Oh, it's just smiley faces. Oh, okay. Not too bad. Washington Justice now have Happy ready to move in with a Death Blossom, but there's not too much to be able to support. All right, so no alter. Happy is still yet to get to a Death Blossom, by the way. That's showing how little impact Happy is having. Maybe just playing Soldier would be better at this point because it feels like Happy is just getting no value on the Reaper. Good heals by Crimson. They give up the point again. It's a really bad to give up that point because they can, even if they like, if this fight gets dragged out, all of a sudden Washington could win the round for for just winning that one team fight. Oh, Valentine be beaming. But once again, like Boston is just playing the disengage against the Winston Reaper really well. Like if they, it'd be nicer if they didn't give up point and that kind of needs to go on to like, I don't know, maybe faith a little bit, but. Other than that, like, it's still, it, it's been perfect. Oh, good. But, like, and look at the bubble timings. Like, the bubble timings in the Death Blossom have been good. That was a good boot. I think that was a good boot by Faith, by the way, uh, pushing Mag off of the point. They don't really have any pressure for Victoria. Yeah, and that's, I think Happy should just be on the Soldier. I think they would be getting more value if Happy was just hard flanking on the Soldier because they don't really have a lot of punish for the Soldier. So if they just played Happy on the Soldier, I think it would be a better run. I, at first, I liked the Reaper, but I actually don't think I do like the Reaper because I feel like you just get outpaced by the bubble. It doesn't feel like he can go aggressive enough. With, he's just getting forced to Wraith too early. And I think that may have left him in a poor position when it came to those particular clashes, but maybe a Soldier 76 would have helped better in or have Mag on the Zaya, which we know. It would work better if there was a Mirror Monkey. Yeah, exactly right. I just think they lose the Zaya. All right, so we're going to get Soldier Tracer Winston. And this is going to go to what I was saying. It's like, I don't think Punk, Punk Winston isn't great, right? It's not better than Mag, but I think it's serviceable, right? Like, I think you can play Mon Punk Monkey on Gibraltar on that. It's not going to be your strength. But I think they're better off doing that. That was a great nade. That was a that was a nade by uh, Crimzo here. Look at how big this nade is at the beginning. Boom! Three person nade by Crimzo is actually sick. That allows Punk to follow up, gets Krillin. Do Washington have another tank? Um. Yes, they have Kalios on the bench. He play. I, does he play in third map? I think he plays in third map. They also have uh, Vigilante, um, who's uh, another flex support, who's really good, but he's not of age yet. All right, not great play, play by Punk here. Getting a little lost in the source. Good dive by the Justice. That, that, that was way too easy for the Washington Justice. Like, I think Punk was not in position to help well enough, and I don't think Boston was ready for that dive. Oh, Decay dies, though. Such a smart player. Yeah, and that's it. Like, Punk has shown that he's he's versatile. He's a smart guy. He knows how to play. Like, I, you know me. I, like, I've, I, I've, been, I've been chilling Punk since the 2019 World Cup. Uh, wait, 2018 World Cup. So, it's awesome to see him performing well. And, like, I think the thing to remember as well, Punk has been consistently performing in unideal situations, right? Like, he's been getting subbed out left and right this year. Same shit happened to him last year. He's literally been overperforming every situation he's ever been in. Like, Boston really just needs to lean into Punk more, especially with how good he is as a PR. He could easily be the face of the franchise. Just make Punk the face of the franchise. His PR is sick. Oh, good play. Good nade again by Crimzo. Uh, he could easily be the face of the franchise. His PR was sick. Did you see that post-game interview he did? I mean, he was genius. He's funny. He's he's marketable. Ooh. Valentine gets Krillin. Why would they need to play uh, MCD to play Insult? The reason that they usually play MCD when they play Itzel is because that provides a completely Korean roster and they can communicate in Korean. Which is nice, but... They're better off just not playing it. Like, it just doesn't work. Like, I don't think Itzel MCD is a bad lineup either. They just need to commit to one, and I think Punk provides more versatility. And Crimson just gets way more value. Dude, look at... Oh, this was a... This is a interesting Primal by Mag. I don't... I don't know if I love the Primal by Mag, because it just gets them out of spawn. And Victoria will be back eventually. That Because, like, they already lost uh, Opener. And then Punk uses... Oh, this was actually a sick primal. He gets woken up. Look at this Punky primal. Bloop, bloop. 
fucking nasty, right? Like, who can, like, you cannot tell me that this is not good Winston play. Like, the only thing that I've seen Punk fuck up so far is that, uh, when that re-engage, he was just in the wrong spot. But Great Primal, way better than fucking M Mags. Punk MTD. Oh, not a great jump. I think he thought they were going to be there. <laughs> It's always great if you only want a Winston, yeah. And but I don't know if it's even worth giving up the synergy. I, do you think Itzel is a good enough Genji to justify not? Uh, wi sorry, Winston to justify switching MCD and Itzel? I don't think it is. And they've tried it and it hasn't really worked. That's my problem. Like I don't think it's worth taking Crimson and Punk out for certain maps. I'd rather just see uh, Punk Winston. Invest resources into Punk. Because, like, uh, what was the game? Uh, Punk Winston lost on Route 66 against Vancouver, but Punk looked good in that Vancouver game as well, and, like, Boston just, like, dropped the spaghetti. Punk played Doom? No, we haven't seen Punk Doom. Good beat by opener to save Mag. Yeah, Valentine's sticks have been good. Valentine kind of pounding. Just wait, it gets worse to Lemon. Punk did play Doom, I think it was against Vancouver. I remember Marvel played Doom. I don't remember him playing Doom. What's this? Valentine deadlift on uh, Oasis? I believe it. Like, he was really good. And, like, if Valentine can play Tracer, if Valentine really knows how to play Tracer, like, Victoria Valentine can be, be easily the DPS duo. Like, I'm fine with Valentine uh, Victoria. As I said, it's not the best DPS duo in the league, but they don't need to be the best DPS duo in the league. They just need to be good enough to beat most teams, like, uh, the bottom end teams, right? Exactly. Boston just need to keep playing this icon. Washington has shown an inability to know how to deal with it. They just, they like, and that's it. They just won playing Winston Soldier Tracer. Luciana against the Washington Justice, a team that is good at that composition. You don't need to sub Aitzel and MCD in if the current roster is doing just, just fine on it. I think Victoria played really poorly on this map. Let's have a look. Don't they full hold? I think they full hold Washington here, right? But I can't remember what their attack was like. Making the next McGravy? Yeah, that's a great point. He has the market ability for it. Oh, good nade. Ah, uh, that was greedy by Valentine. I don't hate the decision to go for it, but that was greedy. Decay has been like non-existent in this match so far as well. Like as a tracer, like he is so dominant as a tracer in the past and he just really hasn't had any impact yet. I like the setup by Washington. Boston's really struggling to get anything done. Oh, good boop. Oh, damn. I think Valentine should have backed to... Oh, wait. Is he out of that? Nano on the punk, though. Bzzz. Oh, Nano buys... Oh! Crimson diff. Oh, okay. Punk's trolling. Actually, was that punk? Or was that... Faith. I really miss playing Overwatch 2. Same. 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 
Honestly, like they, you jinxed all of this because when you tweeted, you were like, oh. All right, Victoria's got Visa. This should be pretty hot for them. Oh. They still have Visa, yeah. They just break the bubble. I think he buys it too early. That was way too early of a Visa. If he just waited for the bubble to go, it would have been fine. Uh, that was... Nah, they should be fine. The Visa was fine in the end. Clean by Punk. What happened to a printer? Uh, from what it sounded like, from what Avril was saying, they didn't have the budget to get an off tank and keep a printer. And because they like they were running out of money due to uh, their parent company sort of pulling back on funding, they had to drop them. <laughs> Disregarding chemistry, would you play Crimson or MCD? I'd go Crimson. Yeah. Crimson has been playing way better than MCD lately. Faith is doing a great job of peeling for Crimzo. Yeah, like Crimzo is just feels like Crimzo is just permanently vibing here, and that Mag can't do anything. So I think I guess you got to give that uh, credit to uh, Faith. Oh, Nano buys by Happy. That was that was good play by Washington. They beated and then Nanoed uh, Nanoed Happy out of that. That was that was very clean play by Washington. That was a lot of ults from everyone, but fuck it, one. Boston invested so much in this to lose it as well. What a boot for an opener. Not entirely sure how Valentine got zero value out of that death blossom. It must have been a huge opener, but of course, there was the assist from Lucio in the kill feed. But Valentine must have taken a real haphazard position where opener was able to simply boot easily in one direction, and no one got caught by the AOE as Valentine was thrown elsewhere. And now Washington Justice can try and hold this area. When is the molding coming? I promised I wouldn't mold in this VOD review. I promised. I've done enough molding about Washington. That's pretty good by Mag. Draws the attention. Yeah, like draws the attention. Pretty much completely mitigates the nano visor. Oh, Punk almost lived through that. Oh, I thought that was a purple nade. No, it was a... Good team fight win by Boston, though. Like... Oh, actually, that wasn't a nano visor. It was just a visor. Okay, so that's actually not that bad. We're seeing more hot takes and you'll forget, chat. <laughs> Honestly, true. Yeah, no. I like it. I like it. Good minute, like, good play, like, and that's the thing you, like, you gotta give credit to Boston. They are playing smart, like, they're not just, like, outplaying individually. Like, they're disengaging. Everything Washington tries to do just gets countered and mitigated. Like, I really like the synergy between Valentine and Punk. And Val and Decay just can't hit a pulse bomb to save his life, which is so funny, because it's so different to what happened in the Atlanta match. There's a lot of damage, though. I don't mind using the visor and the death blossom to get the, se the second point. I think that's just that's just value right there. Oh, cool. thank you very much for the 22 months, by the way. Yo, original Ash Ketchup. Thank you very much for eight months as well. Love your content. Thanks for being a phenomenal figure for people looking to Overwatch one, y'all. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How did Kane happy not carry in this game? And that's the question of like. It, it, like, it doesn't even look like anything is, uh, it, like, I don't think Happy and Decay are playing, like, super bad. It just feels like they're not getting the impact we expect from them, right? Like, going into this match, Decay should be able to pound, and he's just not. Oh, Valentine just falls over. Is he gonna grab? Yeah, that was not, like, that was not a bad beat by Faith. It just felt like Valentine just evaporated. Dave York, thank you very much for the fresh help as well. Boston is playing as a team and Washington is playing a, a bad individual plays. Yeah, it kind of feels, yeah, it kind of feels like Washington is relying on individual pop-off, right? And like, that's like, that's how they beat, you know, um, like they, Decay just went sicko mode in the, that match against uh, Atlanta. And like, they just, everyone was playing really, really well. Happy was popping off, but it feels like they just, those players aren't carrying in the series and... 
for that reason, Washington just looks pretty meh. Like, I don't think Washington have terrible synergy, but... Memanoi, thank you very much for three months. You think it would win now, London or Boston? If Boston played this exact style, I think Boston would win. Alright. Wait, where did Punk grab? Oh. Alright. But that's a bunch of ults from Washington. You go into this last fight with your ults. Yo, yeah, well, Hatcher FPS, thank you for the Prime sub as well. Yo, yeah, thank you for all the subs, guys. I appreciate you. That was just Nana? Yeah, but like, the, the, the one before that was beat. So now you go in with, you're about to get a bunch of ults. Like, if you can open up with Nana Visor, you'll probably get a death boss and beat by the end of the fight. Just live! Nice, live. Like, that was really good heads up play to just live. Another great sleep by Crimson on the mag on the primal. That would have been a sick rocket if he got that. I think it's gonna. Oh! Oh, is this headshot after headshot? Happy diff! Happy diff! I wish we could see this. Headshot! After headshot! After headshot! Crimson is a hater, waiting all this time, preparing to seek revenge on Decay, and waits until Overwatch 2, and where Decay is finally happy on a team to boom him. Dude, fucking Crimson's playing 9D chess, just waiting for him to get comfortable, to take the rug out from under him. Really happy for Crimson? Yeah, dude, Crimson's been grinding since, since like 2016, 2017, so it's awesome to see him starting to get some, like, recognition because he's been he's he struggled right like he he was on dallas like he was on hard teams and it's hard to get, have an iron mental through some of that shit oh that was ambitious by valentine oh that shot on the crimson was nasty i make one hot take and the whole chat is on my ass hey you gotta be careful with your hot takes first of all you need if you're gonna do a hot hot one if you want to do a really spicy hot take, you got to do a hot take with 15k. If you try and do a spicy take, not but not redeeming 15k, can't do that. And the reason that rule exists is because we 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 were doing these body reviews and people were just spewing the wildest shit. They're just spew. They're just saying shit for the sake of saying shit with a hot take tag, uh, with like just like putting a hot take on it. You know, it's just you can't have that. I don't think it's a hot take, but I think Hunters would be better with the Pritter than Jinmu. Oh, 100%. 100%. Crimson gets underrated. Hard to be a great player on a bad team. Yeah, it's exactly the same way in which I think there are a lot of average players who are considered exceptional within the league, but it's just because they're surrounded by great players and stuff like that, right? It goes vice versa. At least having the option for Chengdu Hunters? Yeah, that'd be nice. Why wouldn't they drop Jinmu for a printer? Maybe he was already on contract. Maybe they wanna they 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 like Jinmu better, they trust Jinmu. It's hard to really know. That might have been a little too passive by Valentine, but hey. I'd rather be safe than sorry, right? I like this hold by uh on King's right. Redeem hot take. Custer used the wig. I've seen the seam. The seam. Hide the seam. You cannot see. Don't, don't expose me. Yeah, that's how, like, I'm not sure where Avril got the source, but he said it on the broadcast that they had to make the decision between getting Daisy and getting uh, a Pritta. And they, they preferred having the flexibility into the off-tank role for Daisy. 
uh, than having a Predator. Which, honestly, I don't hate that decision. At least it seems like there is some rhyme or reason for the decision. Johnny with the 32 months. Can't believe I give you money. Use this for your Washington Justice Therapy sessions. This is a Washington Justice Therapy session. Chad is my counselor. And, and if anything, they just push me closer to insanity. That means you need to pay us? No, no, no. It's a different kind of counseling. Maybe 32 months, Johnny. Razor, thank you for the Prime sub as well. Welcome back to them. How are you feeling about Collusion's ability to play other things than Winston against Fuel? It's hard to know, right? Like, we know Collusion's a good off-tank player, but we haven't seen it from him or the San Francisco Shock. So it's like, I, I could give you some bullshit P PR answer, but the uh, the honesty is we don't know. And if they, I think that is why I predict and put Dallas Fuel above in my power rankings to the San Francisco Shock is because I like the Zaya compositions better and I think the Shock might struggle against the Zaya compositions. Playing Winston. Dude, great. Like, the the Boston Uprising are just hard out playing the Justice right now, right? Like, Justice, every time they try and do something, they get countered. Great grab by Punk. Gets the kill before opening against the beat off. And I think the Justice, they're not being proactive enough. Like, they're not... They need to just use some ultimates to get in because it feels like they're waiting for the perfect scenario. But the Uprising are just playing with a faster tempo. Just isn't playing passive, yeah. And like, I think that's, I think Johnny made this uh, example on Plat Chat and it was like very, like, I completely agree with it. The Justice look their best when they're playing reactive and when they are playing in a style in which they can play reactive to the way certain teams are playing, right? And that's why the Atlanta Reign, they were playing the Doomfist. They, the best way to deal with that Doomfist is to play reactively against that Doom play because the Doom has to go in before that. But the Zaya, the way that Boston Uprising plays the Zaya and how Zaya works is that you need to be proactive against the Zaya because the Zaya gets more neutral value against you. The best way to do it is to out-tempo it, play aggressively, deal with the Reaper, and then overcome it. Um, but they're not doing that. They're just letting the Reaper roll through them and just like giving them all the space in the world. They, they like another prime example, right? They nano, they nano the Reaper in, and then like Washington Justice try and nano visor after. It feels like the de nano death blossom is already coming through, so they're going second over and over and over again. And now Happy switches to the Widow to try and like hope they can get something done. And this is a great call. This is a great call by the Boston Uprising, by the way. Like, th this needs to be stated. Boston know that Decay, Decay is in their back line. Boston know that they have Visor coming up. They know that they just need to go first. If they just if they just play back of like, whole oh shit, final fight, we just need to play back, they would probably lose this fight because they got Primal, they got the Pulse Bomb, and they would get sandwiched. So what they do is they go first. Decay is all of a sudden, he's not in this fight. They're taking a 5v4. They get so much space. They isolate Mag. They get the they get the Primal out before anything happens. And then all of a sudden, Decay has to go to point on his own, gets caught, gets caught has to recall early because he get, they take a 5v4. They force the ultimates out. They disengage. They go into a 5v1. They get the punish on Decay for the touch, and now all of a sudden Justice have to stream onto the point. Like that's just clean macro play by the what, uh, by the da uh, Boston Uprising. Like they're just pl out playing the fucking Washington Justice, playing them like a fiddle. Justice, you're trolling. True. All right. Now it's time to talk about it. Still catching up. This is the moment that the Boston Uprising tried to throw the series.
In what world? All right, I said I wasn't gonna get, I wasn't gonna mole. Okay. In what world does a professional organization like the Boston Uprising keep making the same mistake? If they had tried to sub Itzel and MCD onto Dorado or Watchpoint Gibraltar, I could see it better, okay? Don't worry, like, as I said, that's their Winston Anna combo that they, they know they're going to play Winston everywhere. I would understand. We're going to Circuit Royale. Which Thank is very much, even teams that one-trick Winston, like the San Francisco Shock, like the Gladiators, do not play Winston on this map because it is not good. Yet, for some reason, when they have Washington Justice on the ropes, you know Washington Justice isn't going to change things up too much. They actually put in Callius and do, like, mix up. But you have the Washington Justice on the ropes. They have shown no ability to be able to deal with your Zarya compositions. I don't care how much you have scrimmed. I don't know what you've had success with. You just go with what is working. You should run and adjust on the fly. Coaching needs to be happening on the fly. And then even if they were like, well, we've scrimmed with Itzel on this, on this map and we have all this experience. Why does Itzel play Winston? It's so bad on this map. And it's going to be shown on here. Like, it's literally such a throw. Like, there's no justification for why Itzel would come in to play Winston on this map. Zero. Zero, I don't care what you say. There is no justification for why it's all needed to come in for this map. Who are the coaches for Boston? Uh, I know Laurie is the head coach. I'm actually not sure who their assistant coaches are. What about getting a uh, playtime when you're up 2-0? When you're a team... That is one in three in the season. The only team you've beaten is the Vancouver Titans. You have lost to the London Spitfire and New York Excelsior, I think. And you are now 2-0 against the Washington Justice. Not the time to give people playtime. Not the time. You gotta win matches. Having experience means zero things if you just go one and four. I, I, I made the same justification when uh, the San Francisco Shock flipped Kilo and Proper. Is this really the time that you want to be giving people experience? You want to give people experience when you're playing what you consider to be a worse team, not when you're getting a unprecedented win. Lori, Barroy, and Ascoft. Okay, there you go. Polvari with the hot take. Sol is going to win grand finals this season. My reasons, Fitz is my favorite player. I'm going to move to Sol soon. And Tiger is their logo. Hey, well, hey, that's just personal fandom. I respect it. I don't, nothing about what Sol Dynasty have shown so far makes me think that uh, that's, that's going to work. But Thank hey. Very much money. Okay, Itzel goes down on the Winston. Yo, Blue Shumu, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Boston doing Boston things will never get less frustrating at this point. Dude, I don't know how... If you're a fan of Boston, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you're such a masochist that you, you, you put yourself through this kind of torture. It's skeezy. I have no emotions now. Ah, problem there. So, too bad. Thank you for the four as well. Much love, much love. All right. So far, we are one and a half minutes in and nothing has really happened. A lot of poking. And okay, so let me talk about why Winston is bad here, okay? So let me give some context. Circa Royale is such a long sightline map. The reason we see so much Widow is that it's very difficult to dive because you just can't get the distance far to get to onto the back line. So that's why you see a lot of Zenyatta, a lot of Widow, because you have a lot of space to work with. So Winston can't really close that space. And if he does try to close that space, it's a one-way uh, ticket. You're either going to kill everyone or you're going to die trying. And that's, that's the big issue. It's the reason we see a lot of Sigma, because Sigma can control that space. He's essentially like that, that blockade in the linear style. And that's why we see so much Sigma, Zen, Brig, and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
It's impossible to dive. And then Boston is going to play Genji Winston with a Widow. So it's almost impossible to dive as just a Winston Genji against the Brig. They're relying on Victoria to just kill a bunch of people. But Victoria is playing Widow versus another Widow who is happy. And then he has to get through a shield and he has to get through all these things. That Nano was also not very good from MCD. They were already winning this fight. There was no reason to Nano Itzel because they're going to want that Nano back. Thank you very much for money. Bushimu with 100 bits. In what world do you scrim teams over and over again and decide to play the tank that has literally been decided by every other single team to be the least value point of this one? That's a great question. I don't know. Like, and the question becomes, right? Who did the Boston Uprising scrim against in which Winston Genji Widow worked, right? Like, they, I just don't believe there is a world in which that happened. There's just no way it worked against anyone good. Vancouver, like, and that's it. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I just don't understand it. Cause like, I don't even think it would work against Vancouver. I don't even think it would work against London. So let's look at, let's look at this Primal Rage by Itzel. So Itzel dives, has to dive past the Tracer and the Sig, and just primals, gets rallied, and then he like primals into fucking Narnia. Victoria gets killed by a Brig. Do you think they plan to play Ryan and then switch to Winston in the cause the enemy comp? Well, like, as I said, it's not like the Washington Justice are throwing a curveball. This is not a this is not a unique comp. A lot of people play this composition, right? Like, what composition would the Winston work against on this map? Would it be better against him that are on Bap Zen instead of Brig Zen? I don't think it, no one's really playing a ton of Bap Zen, and I think Bap Zen would murder the Winston. Like I don't think it would work against Rush. Against Hog Sombra? <laughs> For all the teams playing Hog Sombra. Good sleep. Pub just mirror, and that's it. It's like so they're planning on the mirror, but Boston they subbed in Kalios. You know they're not gonna play Winston. Like, maybe they literally, literally thought that uh, Washington wasn't going to change Mag out, and they thought they were going to end up in a Winston mirror. Okay, here we go, baby. Nanoblade soon. Oh. Oh, Victoria gets the K. It's happening. Do you figure out why they subbed? You can't figure something out that makes no sense. There's no rhyme or reason or logic. That is the conclusion that I've come to. Wait, they nanoed? Who did they nano? Victoria? Was that, that had to have been an accident, right? He must have pressed Q when Valentine died. Oh, he, he must have missed. He, I, did, I think he definitely missed. Funnily enough, if he didn't miss, I don't know if Valentine would have died to that headshot. Oh, no. Do teams see their colors? No, they don't see it. That's a, that's a spectator thing. The team colors are a spectator thing. The players see the game as you would playing normal Overwatch. Blue and red or whatever your colorblind settings are. Kalos whiffs the flux as well. Like, yeah, it's not even like Washington's playing incredibly well. So now Valentine pulls the blade and transcendence. He gets discorded. Yo, I was so mad watching this. I was so mad. Because Boston literally just threw away the map. Also there went to Blades and was supported by an anti-nade, which actually turned off the 
healing on the Brigitte, which meant that she could not receive a transcendence healing. And Valentine, having gone up against a half health, it's, healed Brigitte to it's just so. It's just so hard to watch these teams sometimes. He doesn't hit a flux this game, really? It wasn't it's MCD or it's yeah, it's literally like it the these players were not put in a situation to succeed. Like the composition is just bad. I it's all an MCD could be the greatest players in their role. It would not work against the comp that the Washington Justice is playing. The only thing that could have redeemed the Boston Uprising if Victoria went sicko mode on the widow. It's the only way I could see them winning this map. Because even Valentine MCD, like with the Genji nano blades, like yeah, they fucked up some nanos, they fucked up some blades, but even then, I don't think that would have sold it. Oh, good purple. Good purple by MCD. Oh, he almost got Valentine there. Think Happy Widow is underrated nowadays? I don't think so. If you underrate your Happy Widow, you're just not paying attention. Happy's like one of the better Widows we have in the league. If not one of the better. Like, I would put him in like top three, top five, probably. It's hard to really know how good Widows are these days. We haven't seen enough. Have you done Shock Glads yet? Yes, it's actually on my YouTube right now. I uploaded it this morning. Oh, happy diff. Faith gets happy at the last second. One more bot after this one. I think I have a special treat for you after this one. I'll talk about. I'll talk about it after. I saw now. I was on YouTube was recently. I, thank you. I, I I sort of changed them a little bit with my most recent one that's gonna come up. Just sort of like cleaning it up a little bit. But yeah, we've been trying to make it more clear and have a style for it. All right, Boston coming into this final fight. Itzel gets forced to use his primal off the bat and then just disengages with it. We get Faith with a with a rally, but they can't go aggressive. They just can't go aggressive because they're playing Genji wi uh, Genji Widow. And then Boston C9. It's an aneurysm. That's what it was, leg day. It's an aneurysm. Okay. It's okay. We're on to map four. We got Punk and Crimzo back in the lineup. I was really worried that they were going to lose all their momentum. Yo, Blue Shimmy. Sorry, I missed 100 bits from you as well. Thoughts on a possible ball meta to counter Widows on point one? I don't think so. I don't think ball's very good. I think especially on uh, Circle Royale, it's like you can't flank. Like they, the the only way to really get around the map is to go down the main. There's like lots of little chokes and flanks and stuff like that, but not good for a wrecking ball. Who was the most egregious C9 this season so far as a Hongzhou? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah, we watched the Chio game pub yesterday. The, uh... Yeah, I feel like the subs are decided before the game because the players that are getting sub leave right after the map. Yeah, well, it's like people play on certain maps. But the best coaches know when to keep certain players in and when to pivot and when to change strategies, right? And also, why did they think playing Itzel Woodson on Circa Rao would be the plan? Right? Like, that's just a bad plan. No, Riss is still yet to get any playtime. Alright. So Washington got the first fight. Good 
Good peel from Faith there. Unfortunately, got purpled on the way through. This is when I thought it was over. This is when I had accepted that the reverse sweep was about to happen. I I, I was I, I was going through the the level of acceptance at this point. This match makes no sense to me. The match made no sense to everybody. Hannah's Dirkiners, thank you very much for the primes up. One v two v two. Pretty good play by Boston Uprising. Getting the better of it. It was close. Oh god, Valentine almost died before the fight even started. Look at it, like, this is where the meme became of, like, Decay holding the pulse bomb for Overwatch 3. Like, he holds his pulse bombs to such an unreasonable amount of time. Like, he'd probably be at, like, 30% ult charge if he had just thrown it on Punk in that hallway. And even if he bubbled it, at least he forced it and stuff like that, right? Like, he's just got to throw it. As an experienced Tracer player myself, it just feels like he's holding it too much. Oh, he actually did throw it. I don't know who he threw it at, but he missed. Good peel by Punk. Make sure they don't get hit by the nade or anything. But, like, look at how passive Washington is playing, right? Like, think about how long we've been, like, fighting. Having this contest where it's, like, they're fighting for the high ground, that kind of stuff. Washington just refuses to go. They are playing the dive comp, yet they refuse to go. And this is inherently the problem with how Washington is playing the Winston style versus the Zaya style. The Zaya style is more likely to get better ultimates, bigger plays over time than the Winston. Because they're never effectively going to kill anyone. They just at some point need to go. And this was the same issue they had on the Wrecking Ball Sombra composition last year in 2021. Remember when we molded at Mag for doing the same thing? Just feels like they're so afraid to do anything and everyone's just sort of waiting for something to happen. There we go. And like Valentine's just hard diffing decay. Good visor by Victoria. Closing out the fight. And like, you know, like Leg Day says that was a bigger investment that he was counting on. I think those ultimates were good. Like, to win that fight, like, obviously, they didn't get every... Like, Washington used three ults, but using five ults is fine if you win a fight where their opposition uses a bunch of ults as well, right? They're all now getting push. All getting that kind of stuff. If they can track and they mitigate happy visor, fuck it, it's worth it. It was very 2020 MYXL, to be honest. Yeah. Good bubble by Punk there. Say That saves Valentine's life. Gives him a second to get up. Gets the recall off. Like, they they, they need to track bubbles, right? Like, first of all, I don't know how Crimson kills Krill in there. That's crazy. But second of all, like, they, they know that Punk just used both of his bubbles. It doesn't feel like they're ever tracking bubbles and punishing Punk for playing aggressive. Punk is just able to use his bubbles willy-nilly and then never get punished for using them both. Like, he's just always just has them. And then even when he doesn't, he's just like, ah. Uh. And then Crimson gets a great sleep, right? Like, Crimson kills Krillin in that fight and then sleeps to K when he gets pushed. And then the fight before that, he slept to Primaling Mag. Like, Crimson is just hard pounding. Punk is popping off on the Zaya. Like, never take these guys out. They are just hard car uh, farming this game. Also, Decay didn't use that pulse bomb that entire fight, I don't think. He had it. Better teams will dismantle Boston on this comp before they get more chance to practice it. But that is fine. Right? If they... Boston Uprising. There is no composition that Boston Uprising or series of players that uh, Boston can play that is going to beat people. That is going to beat Dallas Fuel, San Francisco, Shock, La Los Angeles Guardians, right? And that's what, like, you got to under... I feel like... 
some people have these unrealistic expectation of like, oh, well, they're going to lose to this team playing this comp. It's like, as long as Boston, if Boston can get eighth, they're fine, right? Like, I think they're happy. And then they have the potential to beat teams like the Washington Justice as well. So it's, it's good. Yeah, like, this is a much better look from the Boston Uprising. And uh, it, it's cool to see them getting some success. Anything is better than what they did at the beginning. Decay still has his pulse ball, by the way. It kind of feels like he's like playing stats, you know? I actually, I'm actually curious. Four oh eight was when he got this pulse bomb. Okay, this is back where we're at. It is two minutes since he used his pulse bomb. Since he got his pulse bomb, sorry. This is a great call by Leg Day. Like, it's actually such a good a recognition of that. He's held it for two minutes so far. It's a pot, like, and it's not like this is some big ultimate, like a grab or a nano or a blade, right? Where you're holding it for the perfect moment to be able to close that. It's a pulse bomb. Just fucking throw it. You'll charge another one in like 30 seconds. Family heirloom, yeah. And then he throws it as he dies. He threw it like 140. So he held that pulse bomb for two and a half minutes to just whiff. And that's why like pulse bomb, you should never hold a pulse bomb because it's so easy to whiff that you should just, you're better off just throwing as many as you can and missing a bunch than holding onto it for the perfect moment. Do you think Happy gets more value in Ash here? Maybe. Like, I think Ash against the Zaya composition can be really good because it, they don't have as many opportunities to punish you. But generally what happens is if Happy switches to Ash, Valentine would probably go Reaper. Like, that would probably be the transition you would see. And then you just bubble the Reaper into the Ash. And, like, the Ash can't really do much about that. Because what happens is when you get in the Ash face, they need to break the bubble before she can coach gun. And you can die in that period. So then she probably has the coach gun into the bubble. And then all of a sudden the Reaper can just run you down. So it's like, I feel like if the, the Zaya Reaper play, team plays well, you just get in the face of the Ash and it, it doesn't work. And then Punk, and then somehow they win this fight. Punk is just existing. Decay is such an interesting player, in my opinion. I feel like he's a player that really struggles with confidence. He's like so talented, but I feel like some days he just looks like he doesn't believe in himself to accomplish anything. Like when he played against Atlanta, he looked so pro confident. He had no respect for the, that Atlanta ring team and he just dominated them. But then he like, he has too much respect for the Boston Uprising, right? Like, is that why Emma 3 switches Cassidy? No, Emma 3 switches Cassidy because he's a fucking bowler who just knows he can dunk on him. And then, yeah, they, they get the primal in the room. But it's nothing. Mag just primals in the room, gets got. Boston. Diff. Big cross, cross to the Boston Uprising. Punk and Crimson absolutely deserve that win. They popped off in that last round as well. well that, was, that was an off day for the Washington Justice. I will say this. I am very critical of the Washington Justice more as a meme, right? I, it's not, it's not a, like, it's honestly not hatred. I really don't care. It's more of a meme, but it's real in the form of they need to get their shit together and they need to find a way to get some consistency because that is something that is going to plague them throughout this season. They have a good roster. They are just making bad decisions as a team and not, not playing to win, it feels like. And they just, it's just frustrating to watch a team with such high caliber and such a high skill ceiling, like fall short so often. Uh, and I believed in them, right? 
So they're, they're way better than this. Um, but yeah, big plays by Boston Uprising. You guys want to watch the interview? All right, let's go. Uh, Valentine, by the way, got the player of the match. Some pretty good stats. His Tracer was really good. Look at that. 1.8 deaths per 10 minutes. He's just not getting punished for playing Tracer. All right, let's get into it. Welcome to the post show, everybody. I'm here joined now by Punk from Boston Uprising. Hello, Punk. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm doing very well. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you look very very happy that match was something uh yeah i'm just gonna be honest i don't think a lot of people predicted that boston uprising was going to win this match uh, i think it was 85 percent of our viewers voted for the washington justice and the rest 15 percent were uh with on the boston marketable side. hell yeah today you guys were the victors how'd you guys get how much do you think that coaching is impacting their choices i think a lot yeah, I mean, right we're a professional organization we you know <laughs> he said the line going. Um, he set the line! <laughs> Johnny, Johnny in the background, yeah! Fuck yeah! <laughs> and perform like that uh, feels really, really good. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Johnny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, oh. I mean, I do have to say, you guys looked phenomenal today. I mean, and also, you guys played yesterday as well, and I honestly think you guys look like a totally different team. Like, did you guys change anything after yesterday's match? Like, was there any, like, talks that went on? <laughs> or was it just the fact that you guys are a professional organization? <laughs> uh, in, in just about, yeah, in a, in a day, you guys are completely different. Like, what happened? I mean, it felt, it felt completely different. Like, the... We had some, like... You know, just like the game day vibes were kind of off and we just weren't really ready and like fully committed 100% everyone's going for it. But today... Here's what you need to listen to as well. And what makes this interview so good is like Punk's verbiage in this post game interview is fucking incredible because he, t he, he hits the striker point right there of like he talked about like, hey, it wasn't good like yesterday, shit was going on, we weren't prepared, something was going on. Like he sort of hints at it without saying anything, right? You know, we showed up and we were all in. Everyone, everyone was 100%. So it was just a completely different team today and turned out with a win. Yeah. Um, and one last thing, um, I know a lot of people were, uh, you know, wondering about this. Um, you guys tend to make a lot of substitutions uh, mid-game and like trying to sub in a lot of other players as well. Uh, what's the strategy behind that? Was there is there like any specific reason for substituting a lot of those, a lot of the players that you guys have? Yeah, I think to answer some of those questions, it's like. Um, Obviously our coaches make those decisions and based on like what comps we're playing, who's playing with who. So I think obviously for our substitution today, it was it's how it's gonna play the monkey and MCD because then you've got full Korean lineup and you can all communicate in your own native fluent language. So I think that's the reasoning, but right. um, you know, they, they're great players. Uh, unfortunate they couldn't get the win, but you know, we're all still a team. We're all, we're all doing well together, so. And that, like, that answer is so good. It's the, it's the best PR answer you could give. He throws the shade onto the coach. Well, he didn't throw shade, but he puts the onus onto the coaches for the subbing strategy, but he still gives respect to his teammates and gives justification to his teammates. Boom. Fucking politician punk. Genius. It's a good interview. It's a good interview. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's the match. Uh, you know, big props to Boston Uprising for getting the win. Washington Justice. They got to work their stuff out. They got to they gotta get all their shit, put it into a nice big pile, throw it out the window, and start playing with some confidence. That's really what it feels like they're missing. So thank you very much for watching the VOD review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm excited to see more of this professional organization in the future. Make sure to like and subscribe to the videos. We've got lots of content coming up soon. I love you all, and I'll see you guys next time.